What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another Vegas Pro tutorial for you. And this one, we're gonna be talking about the brand new improvements for the color grading panel inside the new Vegas Pro 20. Okay, so we have Vegas Pro 20 opened up right here and I threw in a DSLR clip I have of myself right here to show off this color grading panel changes. So if we select our clip, we can hold Alt G and that loads up the color grading panel. And then we'll go over to our utilities and then from here, we'll see the new additions, white balance, temperature, and tint. These are two very important pieces to color grading that have been in Premiere, Resolve, and Final Cut, and things like that. And Vegas finally added it into their color grading panel. So what I always like to do first is go to my input LUT and then choose the LUT that corresponds with my camera. And so I shoot in V-Log on my Panasonic GH6. I'm gonna do V-Log to Rec. 709. That automatically fixes the colors and converts it to Rec. 709 for me. And so from here, we drag the temperature all the way to the left. We can see the image is getting much warmer. And if we drag it over to the right, we can see it's getting much cooler as well. If you double click it, it'll reset it back to zero. Same thing with tint. If we drag it to the left, it goes a lot more magenta. And we can see in the vector scope how that's changing. And if we go to the right, we see you get a lot more green. Again, double click if you want to reset it. Now, if you wanted to set the white balance, you can by clicking on this white balance button and then selecting the color white or gray. And so if you hover over the mouse, you'll see the colors change for what you're gonna be selecting. And so I'm gonna choose white right there. And you can see it changes the temperature and tint to give its best guess at a white balance correction. Now, obviously this will work better on a white card or something like that. But for this example, I'm just showing you on what should be a fairly white part of my shirt right here. Next, we go over to the new tab over here, HSL Curves, which is different than HSL, which stands for Hue Saturation Luminance. So Hue Saturation Luminance Curves, right down here, we see an awesome new colorful menu right here, and it has a line that you can double click and add points. And from here, you can drag them up and down. As we can see, I'm moving this around and my shirt's totally changing colors right there. This is very useful for manipulating the color of specific things. Now, if you middle click, you can get rid of these points as well. And if you see up here, we have these six main colors that are used for color correction, along with this gray one, which is your custom picker color right here. So if we select these little squares, it'll drag and drop points directly on the curve line, and then you can adjust up and down as well. And if you right click on a point, we see a few options right here. We have the ability to lock the tangents, and we have the ability to change the curve of the specific tangents itself. So I'm gonna change the curve to, let's say all tangents right here. And then all of my tangents specifically, I can use the arm and change these in a Bezier, Bezier curve, however you wanna pronounce that. And that'll provide some smooth color changes for your specific colors. It's pretty neat. If you right click again, you can lock the axis which only allows you to go up and down if you choose the actual circle itself. But if you choose the square where your initial point was selected, you can move it left and right. This allows for some really precise changes. If you right click on just one of your points, you can choose selected tangents, and this allows you to only manipulate one of the tangents that you've chosen. You can delete it or reset it completely, but the quickest way of deleting is middle clicking on the point itself. Now, if you notice, you can click and rotate and drag the entire curve color spectrum, which is pretty convenient if you want to see some specific curves in the middle or whatnot. Uh, but the one thing I did notice is if you drag and moved it, if you click and move it barely again, it resets. It doesn't actually continue dragging left off from where it was placed. So if I drag it a little bit to the left, we'll see yellows in the middle. If I want to keep going with it, it reset on me and I just gotta keep moving it. So that's a little bit of an annoying glitch that they're obviously gonna fix in the future. And if you double click, it resets the entire graph back to normal. Now, if you select a couple of points and then drill, let's say drag them around right here, if we right click and just say all tangents that we can adjust and grab these little arms for, if we move them up and down, you'll see that they change, but depending on where your arm moves, let's just say I'm moving this one right down here and let's move this one up here, right? we can see how wild they're getting. They go way off the entire grid, as to tell it's just ruining the entire picture at that point. Uh, so Vegas needs to add some sort of limits on that to where the opposite arm of what you're dragging doesn't wildly fly off the handle 
like it's doing now and just ruin the image. Uh, if they added some sort of limits like Resolve and Premiere have, uh, that would be fantastic as well. Now over to the right, we do have a drop down menu that gives us all the same options that we have when we right click on a point, and then we have a reset button that completely resets everything. So if you have a couple points, reset, they're gone. Now we do see a drop down menu right here. It says hue versus hue, and that's currently the only HSL curve that they have available. The Vegas team does plan on adding more like hue versus sat and hue versus luma and things like that that other editors have. Uh, but they're going to be adding those in future updates for Vegas 20. They just wanted to release this first one right now to at least get that started and show you the possibilities and the features that are going to come in the future. So eventually this menu will get filled out with additional features that are extremely useful. I do believe they're actually going to be adding a color picker as well. So you can select it and then choose a specific color just like we did for white balance here. But it's going to drop a point onto the curve itself. But upon release, those are the differences in the color grading panel compared from Vegas 19 to Vegas 20 and what's to come for these panels. And if this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next video.